here is the control unit. We've got the practical port. Um, yeah, parallel port. Spindle power A, Z, Y, and X axis connectors. Fan, which is thoughtfully labeled. So does that mean you can process unpulverized eyes or anyway anyway this thing is held held together with 20 screws minus the fact that they went crazy with hot snot glue on everything there's like webs of it everywhere in here which actually looks to be fairly decent i tightened up the it was just the nut was loose on here it apparently is not keyed that's the only thing in this thing that they didn't glue in we have our four stepper motor drivers for the four axes and this is the VFD for the spindle, spindle control. The only issue I can see having with this is we've got our four drivers along the back here and one teensy little fan that is right behind the x-axis driver. I can see a very minimal amount of airflow getting across the other three drivers. This is the manual here. Thank you very much for your choose the Donda TS series of engraving machines. TS series of engraving machines which high quality and multifunction are produced by Donda Electric. It's widely used in art fair, embossment, badge, metal, mold, PCB drilling, engraving, biological experiment, and so on. The machine is made in high grade aluminum applied in... wait biological experiments? I'm fiddling with the VFD settings or trying to trying to figure them out anyway and sometimes the motor starts sometimes it doesn't. Normally when it doesn't start is when I'm trying to run some g-code and it jams the bit into the wood and snaps it clean off before I can hit the stop button which also doesn't seem to work. The hardware stop button, if I hit the stop button on Mach 3, it does stop. Fiddling around, it seemed like if I would unplug the motor connector, stop the VFD, plug it back in, restart it, it would go, usually. Now, I don't know if this is the issue that's causing it or not, but I took the connector on top of the VFD and kind of just wrenched it sideways a little bit because it was a little bit loose, and it, the motor started up as the VFD was ramping up. I take the connector apart and here's the ground ground connection. All the other connections are soldered securely. There's shrink wrap on all of them that is not shrink wrapped. There is solder in the solder cup of the connection. There is solder on the wire, but the wire is completely loose and the shrink wrap was on it, but it fell off. This side of the cable seems to be soldered securely. And this goes into the back of the VFD like this. However, it appears to be that only our yellow, blue, and red wires are connected to anything. Because if you look, and we'll go in a second, to the other side of this connector under all the scads of hot glue that's on there, only those three are connected and they go straight through the D VFD. The green wire, which is, I guess the ground, maybe? I, I don't know. I really don't know. This thing is wired. There's a blue wire going to ground and just, I think they used whatever wire they had laying around. Here's the other side of the connector. As you can see, it's just a big glob of hot glue, but it's only those two connectors on the right hand side there are not connected it to anything there's only three wires coming off of that and they go straight to the VFD our fourth wire is connected to nothing yeah yeah so well since I've got the ground wire in there and it's already connected I might as well make use of it so I'm just gonna go ahead and wire a lug onto that and tie it into something. I took the top housing off the motor and I just have to make sure to get these couple o-rings back in place properly for the water coolant. I pried away some of the hot glue from the motor connection there and attached 
the wire here, which I was going to run to the ground connector, but when I touched the ground connector, and then probed the motor and put the other terminal of my multimeter onto one of the screw holes in the front here, I was not getting continuity. Yeah, it, it's just painted. There was no continuity for the actual, even the chassis ground on this unit due to the fact that it's painted. I found a self-tapper screw with a machine thread and a nut that happened to fit it. There we go, we have an actual ground connection now. Now with my luck, I'm gonna plug the thing in. It's gonna trip the breaker. Well, so far so good. Hey, and the spindle's turning. Would you look at that?